welcome back to Concilium Watch. I'm Nathan, and today I'm very excited to be showing off the brand new military orders in this episode of Army Builder Briefing. The military orders were my first ever Infinity Army, so I've got a lot of experience playing with them in their previous iterations. And honestly, like with these, with the addition of the new units, and of course the changes to old ones, uh, I think that the military orders have a ton of different builds that they can go and do now. It's almost overwhelming when you first start. But uh, my goal today is to show off some of the lists that I like and lists that I've sort of been experimenting with in the past couple days. And while I do this, I'm also going to be explaining the rules and strategies behind my decisions and specifically based on the missions that I'm building for. So I also plan to showcase today a special list which features only units that are in the new bundle that you can pre-order right now. And as always with these videos guys, we encourage you to play around an army yourself and experiment to find your own unique play style because Infinity is not a game about netlisting, but we want to give you some ideas and get your mind thinking about potential synergies and strategies with your lists. Well, without further ado, let's begin. All right, so I think that the best thing to start out with is, let's say you're a new player and you're just getting into Infinity and you don't really know what to buy and you see this brand new box that's got a pre-order box and a Knight of Montessa, and then this guy that you don't even know who it is, Mendoza. So my goal here is to sort of make a list that uses just those units and comes out to like a full combat group and 300 points, and then sort of explain to you what you can do with that list. So if we go over to military orders, so your lieutenant is definitely going to be the knight commander because if you're bringing the knight commander he can literally only be your lieutenant now sometimes having a lieutenant that's always a lieutenant can be a liability because your opponent will try to hunt them down and take them out but in this case uh, we bring some really useful skills so we've got hollow mask Hollow Mask is going to make it so that when we put our Knight Commander in this Crozier fire team, we can make him look like any of the other Croziers. So they'll have to essentially guess which one is your actual lieutenant and then commit to hunting that one down if they really want to go for it. The other thing is that we have this option here, the Lieutenant Plus One Order. Now, that might be confusing to some people, it's not plus one normal order, it's actually plus one lieutenant order, which can only be spent on the lieutenant usually, but we do have a special NCO in this box. So let's go ahead and grab that plus one order commander. All right, then we gotta fill out the rest of the fire team. In that box, we get three Croziers. One is the MSV2 Spitfire, really great attack piece that's really cheap. Pretty nice. Uh, and then we get two combi rifles. Now, I'm going to grab one random, like, normal combi rifle. And, you know, you could go for the Blitz and an EM mines. That's a really great option. For me, I'm personally going to take the specialist just because I like having specialists in my links. So, we've got our three Croziers, we've got our Knight Commander. So that's four out of our five members that we need. Now, we do have the Lazarus in the box. Uh, so let's go ahead. The one in the box is the boarding shotgun. So let's go ahead and grab her. So we could make a fire team here with these units here. Uh, this is a valid fire team because the Knight Commander can join the Crozier fire team. Infirmer is a wild card in this sectorial. Now, the other thing in the box, though, is the Black Friar, and specifically the brand new profile with six cents and a heavy rocket launcher and a multi-pistol, which is really sweet. So, in this case, having a 
rocket launcher in our fire team is going to be really useful because it's a great ARO piece. It's also got MSV2, which means that you can help defend the rest of your uh, the rest of your list against smoke throwers that will try to throw smoke and get close to you and do all sorts of horrible things with chain rifles and such. So I think that instead of bringing the infirmer in this fire team for now, we're going to grab this heavy rocket launcher and stick that in the fire team to start out with, at least if you're going second. Now, because we are bringing the infirmer not in the fire team, this is just a personal preference thing, but if I'm going to have a doctor running around on her own, I'm going to want the burst of a combi rifle. So we'll grab that. Then um, in the box, you also have two normal sized knights. First of all, they've got the Knight of Justice Spitfire, which is awesome. It's a really great heavy hitter, super armor, super BTS. And this is just like a rock that can be in your army. And the other knight, or size 2 knight, is the San Knight of Santiago. This is an amazing toolbox unit that really elevates any fire team that he gets put into. So, um, the one included in the box is the Hacker. And this is probably one of my favorite ones. It's got a combi rifle and a nanopulsor. D-charges are amazing. And importantly, the Tinbot Firewall minus 3. So... Um, that's going to help defend him and make him better at hacking to kill enemy hackers. And if we end up putting him in a fire team, that will help everyone else in that same fire team as well. So, really great. The final unit that's in the main box is the Big Knight. Now, <laughs> this is a pretty amazing unit. It seems pricey. But when you look at the kind of stuff he brings, it's pretty incredible. So because we have this Lieutenant Plus One order, this is the perfect opportunity to showcase the NCO on this unit. So NCO means that you get to use the Lieutenant orders even though you're not the Lieutenant. So right here we can grab the AP HMG. And this is going to be just like a straight up beater piece. You just let, let this guy go off on his own, take out long-range ARO pieces. Um, the, the thing that's really great about this guy is the hollow projector. So if you're taking on just like a single unit that doesn't have six sense, like it's not in a fire team or anything, he is going to cause a lot of issues for them because hollow projector essentially means that you've got three of them on the table and only one of them's real but your opponent sort of has to pick and choose which one they're going to shoot at or maybe which one they're going to hack. It's it's a very interesting way about um it, it's a very interesting way to move around the battlefield and it's it's almost like hiding in plain sight, which is pretty cool. The other thing that's really nice about this guy is um the natural born warrior, so he can kind of take on some uh, CC monsters just because he's canceling out their martial arts bonuses. And Veteran is really <laughs> incredible. I know a lot of Nomad players have been complaining about this guy because he's almost immune to hacking. I mean, he doesn't care about the Oblivion ARO, or the Oblivion hacking device, uh, hacking program rather, because he's veteran, so he ignores the state of uh, being isolated. So, that's really great. The only thing he really cares about is the one that can immobilize him. And even then, he's saving on a four. So, pretty great. The other thing that makes the hollow projector so good for this guy is you can advance into the midfield and use his decoys, like the two versions of him that aren't real, you can use them to actually detonate mines and um, get rid of any sort of deployable equipment, maybe trick someone into revealing because they want to shoot you. Um, it's a really great 
defensive and sort of like an offensive defensive option. Uh, kind of like doing both at the same time. So right now we have nine orders, but it's not actually nine orders. It's actually more like 11 because of this lieutenant order plus one going into this Knight of the Holy Sepulchre. So, um, now that's, that's the main box, right? Now, the other thing that we're not quite at, um, 300 points here, and there's not a ton of things that we can add in here, but, uh, one of the things that comes in the bundle is the Knight of Montessa. This is a extremely fast motorcycle knight. I mean, how much, like what, what more could you ask for? It's a knight on a bike. Uh, he's extremely useful at being a, uh, a harasser and also doing like a crazy attack run. Now, we don't have enough um, SWC in order to grab the Red Fury. Red Fury is really great. My personal favorite profile, though, is actually this paramedic. Because, let's say you've got your... Uh, Knight of the Holy Sepulchre out in the midfield, and by some happenstance, he goes down. It's going to be a little difficult for the infirmer to get there, because maybe she's on the other side of the board hanging out with uh, the main fire team or something. The Knight of Montessa is the kind of guy that can zoom up the battlefield to get to the units that need his help, and he's a specialist, so you can utilize his combat ability and use him as a specialist to press buttons and complete the mission. So we're going to grab that one. It also helps because the boarding shotgun is the the weapon that the official model is carrying. So that's nice. And we only have three points left. So one thing that you'll quickly realize when you play military orders is that sometimes you will just play with 10 models. And that's completely fine. Uh, it You have to worry about losing two orders if you go first, because they can spend a command token on it. But the nice thing here is that now we have access to this Knight Commander, where we're basically getting two orders back. So right now we would have 12 orders for our main pool, if we also count the Impetuous on the motorcycle, then we've got... 13. That's pretty great. Now with this three points, we have a doctor. So if you want, you could come down here and give her a pal bot. But one of the things that's really great about this list here and this grouping of units is that this fire team here is really flexible. So I mentioned earlier that the infirmer is a wild card, so she can join this fire team if need be. What if I told you that the Knight of Justice and the Knight of Santiago are both also wildcard? So, you could run just this normal fire team, Infirmer on her own, then a duo of the Knight of Justice and Santiago together, or you could put, I mean, you could just mix and match. Like, say you want this guy in here now, then next turn you swap him out and you need the Santiago in there. It's, it's really flexible, in, especially if you start to lose units. So let's say you've got your Black Friar on ARO. Always expect your ARO pieces to die at some point. So if the Black Friar dies, then just swap in one of the others and you've got your five-man bonus again. So I, I would prefer to keep the Palbot away from the Infirmer, just because if she has the Palbot, she's not allowed to be in a fire team. So, uh, this is a good lesson to anyone new to the game. If you've got three points left and you don't really want to upgrade things, we could upgrade a Crozier. Always grab a Warcore. And I would say always grab the 360 Visor. Now, we have a just random unit in the second pool. It's not really doing much, but it's not there to do much anyway. This work where it's just going to flash pulse, and if it dies, it doesn't matter. That's basically it. So, you can make this list with the, the main box, pre-orders set, and just one other purchase of a Warcore. So, I think that's pretty great. 
All right, so that was our main list that has every unit from the box set. It's not necessarily the most competitive list you can make, but it is really great. It's, I mean, it's a great start. Now let's go into some of our more competitive lists. So what I really like to do with my army builder briefings is I like to build towards a specific mission. In this case, I'm going to do the armory. So the armory is a really unique mission, and it's actually a lot of fun because you're trying to get to this center room that has an infinitely tall uh, walls on it, and the really thing, the best thing that I like about it is it's got panoplies inside. So you walk up to it, spend a willpower check, then you get to dig through the box and find some cool gear. And specialists get to roll twice on that table, which is pretty nice. So the, the mission is all about getting into that room and dominating it at the end of the game. Well, at the end of the turn, too. So, in order to get into the room, you have to have something that can open the door. And... So that can be a, that has to be a specialist. So we'll keep that in mind. We need to have specialists for this mission to open the doors. We also need something to be able to clear the room if the enemy gets there first and they've got a bunch of guys in there. So we're talking about templates, maybe some expendable guys that you can just throw in there and try to trade up. Then the other thing that you need is if on the flip side you're the one who's in the room and you got in there first, you need to have durable units that can lock that room down and stay safe. And then just a adjacent thing, for many armies, people like to put hackers in these in these rooms or at least outside the rooms. So just be wary about that because in military orders, we've got a lot of hackable things. So just be conscious about the fact that there will probably be hackers trying to cause problems for you as you try to get in. So, the guy that we didn't really mention from the bundle is Mendoza. And, you know, I talked about something that can clear a room. Oof, uh, Mendoza certainly can. Uh, we're specifically going to look at the heavy shotgun profile because you can turn that into two giant templates that you could just lay down into the room. But I will mention that the multi-rifle is kind of insane. Like, if you just think about that guy in suppressive fire, oh my goodness. So, the reason this guy is so amazing is he's got a killer stat line, but he's also got CC attack and BS attack continuous damage because this guy's all about fire so that's a heavy shotgun that's got fire that's grenades that have fire that's a double action close combat weapon that also has fire and to top it all off you've got some great cc skills like berserk that's something that you can use to just run straight in at someone make them take force them to take two free hits basically with the double action potentially three if you crit. Ugh, it's just ridiculous. He also dodges really great, so if you're trying to not die to the enemy's templates, you can use that. Um, he's also got Mimitism minus six. I mean, this guy is expensive, but oh my goodness. Like, if you just look at this, the kit that he brings, it's just disgusting. I, I can't wait to see more of him on the table. So, we're going to bring that heavy shotgun because we know they're going to be up close because they're going to be trying to get into that room. And you now have the option of forcing a hit rather than taking a face-to-face -face and rolling for it. So, um, we've got our room clearer. <laughs> Let's think about what else we can use to get into that link or into that uh, room. So the other unit that got a real glow up in this edition is the Teutonic Knight. Now, it is kind of sad that the Magisters combined into these guys, but I do think that the Teutonics, uh, they, they got all the best stuff from the Magisters, so I'm very happy with them. Very fast, so you don't have to worry about uh, getting there with um, too many orders. 
And they're, they're just ridiculously cheap. Like, come on. This is really great. Uh, one of the things we can do here is we can grab, you know, we've got access to that uh, Knight Commander now with m multiple Lieutenant Orders. So we could grab this NCO Spitfire. It's a really great attack piece. I will say be careful with these guys because they are impetuous. So that can be really good if you leave if you want them to go out and run on their own because they are really great on their own. They've got they're basically dodging on 17s and they're super quick. But for something like a Spitfire that you're paying like SWC for, I would try to put this guy into a fire team to make sure that he's able to take cover and um, maybe a bit more survivable. So, as I said, you're going to probably have to deal with hackers in this uh, kind of mission more often than not. So let's grab this super cheap uh, firewall for the fire team. And to just round it off, we'll grab the cheapest one here. The nice thing here is that both of these guys have light shotguns which are great to help clear the room, as, as I said earlier, because they can force a hit rather than having to roll for it. So, um, we've got a Harris team here. Now, if we're bringing the NCO, we probably want to take advantage of the Knight Commander, so let's go ahead and grab him. We'll grab the plus one order, because we can. And let's go ahead and grab that... Uh, standard Crozier fire team that we had earlier. So we'll grab the MSV2 Spitfire because one of the things that can be very annoying in the room is if your opponent has a bunch of guys in there and they don't want to get shot, sometimes they want to throw down some smoke. And that can be really annoying because we're great at shooting and if we can't see through the smoke, we can't shoot. So having access to MSV here is going to be really great. And then, once again, I'm just going to grab the paramedic to pick people up. And, honestly, in this case, having the mines is pretty great. EM mines don't do actual damage, but they can really halt someone's advance. So if you manage to get into the room first, people might be wary about coming into it if there's a bunch of EM mines sitting around, because... If they walk into the room, sure, they might be in the room, but if they get immobilized right then, they're sitting ducks. So, let's go ahead and grab that. And then, of course, let's grab the Black Friar because this... I really feel like this uh, fire team here is going to see a lot of play. Uh, it's just a really nice... Um, nice, concise little fire team here that brings a lot of different tools that most lists want or need. You could go for a cheaper, like, Order Sergeant Heavy Rocket Launcher, but, I mean, 10 points to get an extra bit of BS and MSV2, I think that's kind of worth it. multi pistol is pretty nice, too, up close. If you're having to get into that room, you know, the light shotguns and heavy shotguns are pretty nice. Uh, I guess the light shotguns are pretty nice to actually get the hits on, but if you're dealing with really heavy armor... They might, they might not be able to actually wound. Like, you might be able to hit them, but they might not take damage. So that's where the multi-pistol might come in handy. So, um, we've got a core fire team, a Harris fire team, and a room clearer. And we're actually sitting pretty, pretty nicely on our points spending. So, let's go ahead and grab a Trinitarian. Trinitarians are going to be really useful in most lists because they are hidden deployment, infiltrating specialists that are just, I mean, they're, they're really affordable and they've got great weapons like boarding shotguns and submachine guns and mines. You've also got this really great multi-sniper rifle. So you're not going to get to use most of your infiltration in this mission because of the exclusion zone. But I think it's still worth it because, as I said earlier, the, the mines can really help lock down the room. So I'm going to grab the cheapest one here. Uh, just because I really like the submachine gun. 
you've got the three burst AP shots from this and access to the shock in case you're dealing with like a Ghazi that's got dogged or something like that. So we've got one of these. The nice thing about these guys is you can, if you don't want to fully commit on the first turn, you can just send a single like Trinitarian up to open the door because it is a specialist and then um, just chill inside. You can like place a couple mines and then go back into camouflage state and just sort of wait it out. Because if you lose the Trinitarian, yeah, it kind of sucks. But if you manage to stay alive for that first turn, then you get the points and that's all that matters. So the other thing that could be nice here is if we're trying to lock down the room and keep people from going in, we might need some more ARO. So the Trinitarian multi-sniper rifle is really solid. I've been playing around with them a bit more lately. And if you can get them into a really long range position where they can see a decent part of the table, they can be a real menace. So if we've got the Black Friar watching one side of the room, we could have the Trinitarian watching the other side. Or you could even double them up and have them sort of protect each, protecting each other. Because these guys do have hidden deployment, as I said. So you can trick someone into engaging your Blackfire and then also hit them with the multi-sniper popping out of hidden deployment. So if we're going to have him in the second pool, it's honestly fine to just have an ARO piece like this on his own. But if we want to spend some orders on him, we may as well give him a couple of orders in the form of the Fugazi. AVO1, unfortunately. But we could also grab a Mulebot. And the Mulebot's actually not that bad to bring in military orders now. Just because you'll very frequently be using these Teutons. Uh, Teutons with the Panzerfausts. So if you end up using up both of them, you can just reload them with the mule bot. It's pretty nice. Now we do have enough to buy a second mule bot, but the thing that sucks about mule bots is that they can't defend themselves and they're quite big. So instead of this, we're gonna grab the tried and true combo of the Warcor with 360 visor and the wonderful Tech B with specialist operative so she can open the door. She also has a flash pulse and a gizmo kit in case you need to repair uh, the Fugazi or the Mulebot, just on a whim. She's super cheap, she is a specialist, super bare bones, but she is another flash pulse, ARO piece that you don't really care about. And so, in this case, We've got three orders with a Trinitarian on a multi-sniper rifle. It's pretty nice, but I think we can adjust these pools a little bit. I'm going to stick this Trinitarian here and put the Tech B in the main pool. Because remember, since we've got this Lieutenant plus one order, this isn't just nine orders. This is technically 11 orders and an irregular. So, definitely useful. And like I said earlier, if you just want to open the, open the room and stick something in there that you don't care about, Tech B is a perfect candidate for that. Sorry, Tech B. But yeah, uh, this is a pretty solid list. I would definitely run it for um, the Armory. I think it's got all the tools that you need. A really dangerous up-close fire team, aggressive Harris. A toolbox fire team that can stop people from dealing with smoke. Um, and some extra guys that can really hit hard if they need to. So, uh, let's move on to the next one. For our next list here, um, we're going to focus on the mission Unmasking. This is a pretty unique mission where you have to... There are three consoles in the center. You have to go up to the console, you have to press the button... And then your opponent will have three different HVTs. And each HVT is potentially, one of them is going to be the quote-unquote designated target. 
So you need to guess which of the three, you need to press the button, then guess which of the three is the like real designated target, quote unquote. So it can be rough uh, if you guess wrong, of course. Sometimes you can sort of uh, play some mind games with your opponent to figure out which one is the real one based on how they've set up their arrows to defend their own HVTs, but it's not a given, of course. So, for this mission, we need the following things. First of all, we need specialists that can press the button and, um, like, I would prefer to have specialists that can press the button and then go kill the designated target, just because if you start a specialist up in the middle of the field, they reveal the HVT. They're already there. You may as well send them over there and try and kill them. So, you need that. Then you also need something to defend your own uh, HVTs and designated targets. Pretty simple, but it's a, it's a very interesting mission because of all the mind games you can play with the placement of those HVTs. So... We mentioned a little bit about the tertiaries, the Trinitarians, in that last, um, in the last, uh, list. So, why don't we grab a couple of these for this mission, too? They do really great double duty of pressing the button and also using their minds to defend our own HVTs. Submachine guns are also great up close against the enemy HVTs. So, these are going to be extremely useful in this kind of mission. I, again, prefer the cheapest submachine gun, but what I will say is that these boarding shotguns can be really great, especially because if you think about it, you could have a hidden deployment boarding shotgun, and if a fire team happens to walk by you, you can reveal and lay down a template on them. It's a sacrifice play, but you're potentially taking an entire fire team with you, so worth, I'd say. I'm going to grab two of these guys, the cheapest ones, just because I'm probably going to put them on the left and the right side to press those buttons and then go hunt down things. And if we're bringing midfield presence, I really love bringing Dart. I think that she's a great candidate to go and hunt down the enemy HVTs because she can take a hit from a mine and keep on going. Because if we're going to be using mines to defend ours, you can bet the enemy's going to be using mines to defend theirs. So, she has two different loadouts. You can either bring the viral tactile bow along with EM grenades. Really nasty combo there. Or you can bring the normal tactical bow along with shock mines. So this really comes this really comes down to either personal preference or who you're facing. If you go up against Ariadna a lot, I would suggest the viral tactical bow, just because Ariadna cries when viral hits them. Um, and basically all other times, I would suggest the shock mines, just because. If we're trying to defend our HVTs, putting down a couple mines doesn't hurt. Dart's really great because he's got MSV1, so if the enemy uses the same tactics of us of putting a camo specialist up in the midfield, she's pretty good at hunting them down and taking them out. So, we're going to grab the shock mines. Okay, so, next we need a core fire team. And... The cheapest one we can get is, again, these Coadjutor Crozers. I'm going to kind of... I'm thinking we grab a cheapest one and a paramedic. I always bring the paramedic just because shooting two dice to revive some of our knights is pretty great. Um, it's a budget doctor option, and if you're going to be bringing high-fizz units, may as well have the ability to bring them up from the brink of death. So, uh, I'm going to do something a little different in this in this um, list. We're not going to bring the Knight Commander, even though he's really good. I don't think we're going to focus on NCO this time. 
So, my favorite lieutenant, probably in all of military orders, is actually this Knight of Santiago Lieutenant Specialist Operative with a Spitfire, EM grenades, decharges, he's got the works. So, the nice thing about this guy is not only is he a zero SWC Spitfire, which is amazing, but if you can keep him sort of in reserve uh, until like the second or third turn, he's the kind of unit that can do everything. He can complete the mission when no one else can, and if you can save him until the end of the game when every other big hit piece is already dead, he just dominates like bs14 360 visor is really great in the fire team because he can help watch everyone's back he's got decent um cc skills but really it comes down to cheap spitfire nanopulsar which is great for forcing some hits against bts and surprisingly the em grenades come up a lot um if you come up against a bunch of heavy infantry in a Harris or something, if you just chuck an EM grenade at them, uh, it's going to be a bad time for them. And the G-charges are great in close combat or for certain classified missions. So, Knight of Santiago Lieutenant. Now, the, the one thing is, like I said, we're trying to save this guy until the end of the game because we want him to sort of dominate at the end. So I say we give him a bit of a bodyguard that also fulfills his normal role as the point man of the fire team. I'm going to go for the Knight of Justice with the Spitfire. You could grab the Knight of Justice Lieutenant instead of the Knight of Santiago, like sort of switch their roles. You're getting some more durability on the Knight of Justice, but you're losing the utility of letting this guy run off on his own if he needs to. So... I like doing it this way. You utilize the Knight of Justice as your hit piece so that the Santiago is not in harm's way until the very end of the game. And the Knight of Justice has a better chance of, you know, tanking some hits throughout the game that she might just still be alive even, even after everything else goes down. So, Knight of Justice Spitfire is going to be our point man. She'll do all of the main shooting, but... If we want to have some more flexibility here for ARO and also shooting out into like HMG ranges, we may as well go and grab that same Blackfriar. Like I said, this is going to be a unit that's going to be seen a lot, I feel, if you're bringing the Crozier fire team. She's just like a, a no-brainer, I'd say. So, um, we have units that can press the buttons. We have a fire team that can move out and do some stuff. This fire team can also defend um, a couple or one of our uh, HVTs, which is great. So, um, for more defense, I'm going to grab the Trinitarian Sniper. Because if we've got our fire team on one side of the board, we can use this Trinitarian to lock down the other side. And if your opponent thinks that you've left a flank open... They might get sloppy with how they um, move towards you. Like, they might not take cover as much. So the Trinitarian can just pop out of nowhere, take some pot shots on a 15 if they're out of cover, and it's just pretty great. I mean, if they don't have MSV to combat it, the Trinitarian just dominates. So at this point, we're at 247. We could grab one more piece. Now, we mentioned the Montessa earlier. I like the paramedic, as I said. But since we've got some SWC left over, I think we're going to go for the Red Fury. I do think the paramedic is really great in this mission because he can press the button and then go hunt down the enemy. But I've been seeing a lot of people really loving the Red Fury lately, and so I want to give him a try. So... Really solid burst four weapon on a really fast, um, durable hit piece. I mean, that's a that's a great combo. So at this point, at 281, really all we're going to do is fill this out with some extra orders. So, Mealbot and Fugazi. 
And we don't quite have enough for the tech bee, unfortunately, but we can grab the war core. Never hurt nobody. So here we do have a bunch of nobodies in the second pool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick the Trinitarian over here. Could make a case for um, putting one of the Ford Observers here so that they've got their own order pool to go and, uh, you know, press the button and then go take out a unit. Uh, so yeah, let's let's go ahead and do that. Then, I don't like leaving this with nine orders, so I'm going to move the mule bot up here. The reason I put the mule bot in the main pool instead of the fugazi is we kind of don't want the mule bot to die, so we're probably going to hide him more, than, more often than not. So, ironically, the mule bot is going to be safer usually than the fugazi that we usually put on ARO DD. And now that we've made this switch... Honestly, I'm going back to putting the sniper in the second pool. We'll just treat this as our ARO pool and leave it at that. So there's my final answer. I think we're going to go with this. We don't care if the sniper dies because it's in the second pool. If we need to move orders into the main pool, we got command tokens for that. And for our final list today, I'm going to make a classic Crusade fire team. Uh, it's the, the big link with all the Hospitallers and uh, Joan. And I'm actually also going to bring Nefers in this time. Um, it's kind of like a, a big brick you throw at your enemy, but it can be pretty useful in um, certain missions like Annihilation. Um... And it's actually gotten kind of interesting now because we have access to a pretty cheap Harris now, too. So, uh, it's not necessarily all your eggs in one basket. Maybe a, a basket and a little handbag. So, um, let's go ahead and grab Joan. Joan is the, the face of military orders. Uh, it's kind of a shame I've only put her in one list today. But we're going to grab the multi-rifle version. Uh... Not necessarily to save on SWC, but um, I think based on the fire team that we're going to build, if we're bringing to Frozen, we don't really need the uh, Spitfire as much. So I am going to grab to Frozen. To Frozen's really cool because um, he's got Trinity, right? So if we put him in the fire team with our Knight of Santiago hacker they both have the Trinity hacking program right now. So Defersen, if there's just a nobody who walks uh, into zone of control or through a repeater or something, he can, you know, try to spotlight them or immobilize them. That's great. But uh, often the problem you'll find when you're mixing killer hackers and regular hackers in your fire teams is suddenly if the enemy brings a killer hacker to try and take on one of your um, one of your hackers, the um, the non killer hacker if they want to, you basically have to choose right like because they have to use both of the same program in ARO, set due to the fire team rules. So this is a really killer combo uh, that's kind of unique for Pan O. I I'd say uh, it's it's a really useful thing to have. Firewall, of course, will benefit Defersen and every other person in this fire team. So Defersen is going to be effectively BTS 9 against hacking. He's going to use his amazing willpower of 14. He's going to gain a plus 3 from Trinity or uh, whatever uh, hacking device bonuses he gets uh, for the other programs. Uh, but then he's also giving the opponent that firewall mod of minus three. So really cool combo here. Uh, I only wish it was kind of easier to bring him. So this is going to be a very expensive fire team here. Just prepare yourselves. So whenever you bring a Hospitaller fire team or a Crusade fire team, uh, the thing to notice here is Defersen counts as a Knight Hospitaller for fire team composition. So... 
that's how he can join the fire teams. Uh, Joan of Arc does not count as a hospitaller for fire teams. So you're not allowed to put Joan into a Harris of hospitallers. You're also not allowed to, one of the things that you're normally allowed to do in this army is put a order sergeant, uh, just like a, a nobody in the link to make it a bit cheaper. And uh, Joan isn't having any of that, apparently. Uh, you also can't put the Lazarus Knight in this uh, Crusade Fire team, unfortunately. But uh, because we're bringing the Hospitallers, you know we got to bring the Hospitaller Doctor. Now, when I start all of my lists bringing the Hospitaller, I always start with this Combi Rifle. And then if I have enough points later, I'll upgrade it to the Multi Rifle just because you're going to need all the points you can get when you're building a core like this. Now, we have one more space, and we've got a Spitfire, which is great, but there's not really any way to put an Aero piece in this fire team. So, uh, we need something... If we're going to be using it to move out, we're going to need something that can shoot past the 24 inches so uh, we may as well grab the HMG. Now you can sort of supplement this a bit. Instead of bringing the HMG in your fire team here, you could maybe think about, I don't know, bringing a Tick Belong or uh, the new Knight of the Holy Sepulchre. It, there's options now. There's, there's definitely options. But in this list, I'm going to bring the Hospitaller HMG just because it's a tried and true method of getting yourselves out of the DZ. All right, and I mentioned we have a uh, cheap Harris now. We can go down to those uh, Teutonic Knights. So when Joan is in the fire team, she's got this amazing ability with its inspiring leadership, which allows her to spend her lieutenant order as a free coordinated order. Uh, unfortunately, you can't do that while you're in a fire team. I mean, you could, one of the things that's really useful to use for this is if you're, you've moved your fire team, like your crusade fire team into a dangerous position and you've run out of orders, you can use, you could break the fire team by spending Joan's lieutenant order to coordinate, uh, four of your members that she doesn't get all of them, but four of them, she has to be included herself. Um... So three other units, I, I guess, is how I should say that. Um, and just sort of reposition a bit. Uh, it's pretty useful. And then you can spend a command token to just reform. So you're not really getting a free command token. You're just getting like a, a free order instead of having to pay one order and a command token to do that. So um, if Joan's going to be in the fire team... NCO is going to be a totally solid option to utilize that lieutenant order if we're not trying to just reposition some guys or coordinate some other way. And then, um, since we're building towards Annihilation, we don't really have to worry about specialists. So I'm going to move past this Teutonic Knight specialist and just grab the cheapest one. And if we have an extra point, we'll probably upgrade to that firewall just because it's a useful thing for one point. And um, we don't have any ARO, like I said. Uh, but we could go in and grab that. No, oh, actually, we can't grab the Black Fire because she can't join the, the Teutonics. But uh, the nice thing is that the Order Sergeant, that budget option we mentioned earlier, uh, not this one, that's the Escort. This one. Heavy rocket launcher, assault pistol, for only 15 points. It's kind of insane how cheap these guys are. Uh, it's really great because you're going to be wanting to be aggressive here with the Teuton. So once you end up getting close, the assault pistol is really going to shred because it's going to be burst four normally, burst five in this fire team. That's a nasty up close weapon. So at this point, we're at 270 points. I mean, you, you get what you uh, you get what you pay for, but you're gonna not have a ton of things in your list if you go for the Crusader Fire Team. 
Now, the other nice thing about Joan's inspiring leadership, however, is that she makes irregular troops turn regular for the purposes of orders and stuff like that. So we can grab that uh, wonderful combo of the War Corps and the Tech B. And this time, instead of being two irregular orders that we don't really care about, they actually get to contribute their orders to this, this pool and actually do things, which is really cool. And we, we barely have any points left. But I think because we're bringing Defersen, I'm going to bring the Peacemaker. Peacemaker Heavy Shotgun, if you can bring it, it's just so good. It's, it's one of these pieces that you... It's a great piece to hold in reserve. If you see, um, like, Usha or some other unit that's really going to cause you some problems, you can use the Peacemaker to deploy next to them, or you can even, like, body block people and um, utilize this big base as well as the Oxbot's little base to sort of uh, lock people in, like, a corner if Usha decides to uh, deploy in a corner and make that mistake. Um, but, like I said... Because we're bringing Defersen, the other nice thing about this is it's got a repeater. So it's going to be good for attacking and also provide some utility in this list. And honestly, I, I'm happy with this. So we want the Peacemaker in the main pool because if we get the chance to go on a pretty nasty attack run with him, we may as well. And the War Corps is a unit that we don't care if it dies. I care more about the Tech B because she's Pano and because she's a specialist. So we're going to put them all in the main pool. And oh, we've got the two points left over to upgrade our Doctor to a multi-rifle, which is great. So, I mean, that's a Crusader fire team. Uh, this only uses one unit from the new box, but it's it's sort of a classic with a twist of these new Teutons being really useful now. And uh, I think it could do some pretty good work. I, it doesn't have the midfield presence, but what you do with this kind of list is you really castle up, force your opponent to come to you, then punish them for running out of steam once they get up to you and they're like, wait, why can't I wound these guys? Because they're all armored up two wound guys that have a doctor nearby that can go and heal up people that fall unconscious. It's it's a really interesting way to play, and you really do feel like you're, um, you know, building the fort in order to defend against the enemy. And with that, I'd say that's everything I wanted to show off today. Um, there's some really interesting new units in the Military Orders update. I'm really excited to play more of them. Definitely expect to see them in new battle reports. I've been uh, participating in a couple of online tournaments as well, which has been a lot of fun. Uh, hoping to get to use these new units very soon. And um, yeah, just keep watching. Uh, if you have an army that you want to see a video for, go ahead and comment down below and we'll do our best to accommodate. And uh, please hit the like and subscribe button. The like button really helps us out and gets our videos boosted. So uh, we would really appreciate it. Thank you guys. Have a great day.